city of Santa Monica at Hollywood Smoke for another edition of 10 Count. I'm your host, Steve Kim, joined as always by the editor-in-chief of Ring TV, Doug Fisher, and Michael Montero of Montero Boxing. Gentlemen, we have a boxing after dark from the theater at Madison Square Garden. Pretty good doubleheader here. Felix Verdeo takes on Ivan Nahara, and then for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World, Nicholas Walters, the Axeman, faces Miguel Mariaga. Felix Verdeo, Doug, would you say, and again, we know that top rank is matchmaking here. They know right. what they're doing. Is this considered, though, his first quote-unquote real fight? Yeah, well, this is, is his biggest stage. He's headlining. He's going to be on HBO. That's a big deal. He's in the right um, environment. He's at, at Madison Square Garden in the small room. The hope is that he will soon graduate to the big room. He's Puerto Rican. He should be fighting in New York City. And um, Top Brank has shown that they can build a bona fide uh, Puerto Rican attraction. They did it with Miguel Cotto. And it looks like they're on their way to doing it with Felix Verdejo. And in some ways, they were, they were both Olympians. Cotto was a, a, an Olympian, 2000 Olympian, and Verdejo was 2012 yes. Olympian. Um, and both very young in the Olympics. Both um, only went a round or two in the Olympics, but um, it was obvious that, that their talent was going to re really be flushed out in the professional ranks. Um, the difference between Verdejo and Cotto at this stage is that Verdejo is more like Felix Trinidad in terms of his personality, and in some ways with his physique, tall, yeah. rangy, with the power, uh, and his, his style, his style more like Trinidad, which is good news for top rank. Um, Don King had Trinidad, uh, and Trinidad um, arguably a bigger Puerto Rican attraction than Miguel Cotto. One thing that can't be argued, and you know, you've been to Puerto Rico just like I have many times, Felix Trinidad is beloved on that yes, island. Is. Miguel Cotto is respected. But he's not somebody who's loved by, by all hardcore fight fans or all hardcore Puerto Rican fans. Verdejo seems like he's one of those people who has this bright personality and he relishes the attention from fans. He likes it. Um, he seems to be a people person. And so with that mix of uh, his amateur background, something that Tito didn't have a, a great uh, amateur background, um, his natural talent, and this, uh, this personality, I, I think it's a, it's a combination to make a potential star. Michael, early on, what are your impressions of Verdejo? I, I like his style. I think he's exciting. He had some of the best knockouts last year that we saw, right? Some great one-punch knockouts. The personality comes across while he fights. He's got a fighter's personality. He could be a fighter of the people. And I think Nahara is the perfect opponent yeah. for him at this stage because he comes right in. He's uh, somebody who doesn't punch very hard, doesn't have that many knockouts. He's won some questionable decisions, mm -hmm. right? So I think that I would predict that Berdejo gets another exciting knockout. When I was in Puerto Rico for the Salido Martinez fight on the weekend of April 11th, and I was there for about four days, and when you canvass the opinion of Puerto Ricans on the island, and you see the posters and the murals, and like even you go into a bathroom and they have like these sinks with these little video screens on the faucets. One of the images that flashes up is Verdejo. And, mm -hmm. and you talk to these people and like you said, they respect Cotto because he's Puerto Rican. And I've always said and he's, he's accomplished. He is on right. the Mount yeah. Rushmore Puerto Rican boxing. Absolutely. Yes. People think yeah. he's not, but I, no, I he think is. he is. No. But he, he's not warm. Right. There's no personality. There's nothing jovial about it. Now, Verdejo, I remember the first time I saw him in the Olympics, he takes off his headgear. And I saw that smile, right. and it was love at first sight. And I yep. said, ooh, now this guy might end up being my new Francisco Bojado. He could be a complete <laughs> buff. He could be Ryan Leaf. He could be whoever. Well, nah, he's safe. Or he's he's the top rank, dude. But, <laughs> but we're going to find out a couple of things here. Number one, does he catch very well? Does right. he deal with adversity? And does he have staying power? But I like what I see. And listen, top rank would not have made this bout knowing that, hey, they think Nahara is good enough to be on Unamas and Solo Boxeo. Mm -hmm. They really believe Verdejo could be the next Trinidad. And this Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend, he's got a float. This could be the start of something very big. Now, on the co-main or the main event is Nicholas Walters. Walters, how real is the axe man, Michael? I was there when he beat uh, Donito Donaire at StubHub last yeah. year. The power is real. And one thing that I really love about Axeman is he'll take what he can get as far as where he hits you. Yeah. He'll hit shoulders. He'll hit arms. He clipped Donaire at the top of the head because Donaire came in with his head down. Yeah. And even that shot was enough to just put Donaire down and out. He was done. This guy is another person who, who I think has a great personality. 
speaks fluent Spanish, and his Spanish, you know, I was there for the post-fight presser after the Donaire yeah. fight, and I, I didn't know he spoke Spanish that well. I could understand everything he Lives and trains in, Very in Panama. Right, but I, was yeah. I guess I was expecting yeah. broken Spanish, but right. it was so it's clean, man. So he's got a crossover appeal to him. Yeah. Great personality, great guy, and if he could come out and score another big concussive knockout like that, featherweight, I believe, is the most loaded division in boxing, especially when you consider there's a couple guys at 122. If they move up a couple pounds, sure. like Rigo, Frampton, yeah. you got some great fights. You know what's interesting, Doug? They had the open workout for that card in October with Gennady Golovkin Rubio, right down the street here. Yeah, right yeah. here. And I was there. I'll never forget, the first time I saw Nicholas Walters, I thought it was a welterweight. I mean, That's he how big is, is the biggest 26 pounder I've ever seen Likewise. physically. And it's all up top. Yeah. Likewise. I, and I, I think a lot of us favored Walters to beat Donaire because Donaire's yeah. getting long in the tooth. It, it was wasn't a real featherweight yeah, either. Not yeah. a real featherweight. And it was also just clear that Donaire was at a stage of his career where he doesn't love boxing or isn't 100% yeah. dedicated to the sport. And if you're not committed to the sport and you're going to fight somebody like that, Chances are you're getting knocked out. Um, but I think even people who uh, saw it as an even fight or were picking Nonino Donaire, once they saw Walters, even before we worked out, when they just saw him physically in person, they're like, is this uh -oh. dude a junior welterweight? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He fights at 126? How? Uh, he, he, it was he evident can, in the ring, He can right? make the weight. But here's what so. I like about him. Here's what I like about him. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah, he can crack. Yeah, he wants to knock you out. But he has technique. Don't just call him a puncher yeah. because he, he makes use of a jab. He knows how to fight tall and knows how to fight from the outside. He's a decent end fighter, but he's got a good punch selection and the, 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 the skill and the technique and the balance, it's all there with the power and athleticism. In Mariaga, he's facing a Colombian. Now, when Colombians come to this country, they all come with very good records and a lot of knockouts, but there's nothing more deceiving than a Colombian record till you actually see them. Some guys are real, other guys are fraudulent. But let's say we go with the chalk here. Let's say Nicholas Walters chops him down as expected. If they fought down the line, and Bob Aram has talked about this, and Bob, of course, would never lie. If he makes <laughs> Lomachenko Walters, let's go to you, Michael, first. Who do you favor? Man. That's a tough one because Walters has the X factor, mm -hmm. right? He has that ax that yeah. he's coming down with. But Lomachenko just has the skill set, man. So it, we haven't seen Walters in there with a guy yet who can box at that yeah. level. So at this point, I slightly mm. favor Loma just oh. off the experience. Okay. Because, I, I, hey, if you can't catch him, then you can't hurt him. But that jab is legit. I mean, it against is. Nonito Donaire, that was evident right away that he was setting up the power behind that jab. So I don't know, but I, a little too soon for that, I think. I got to go with Lomachenko. Um, his amateur background, his experience, he beat the best featherweight and lightweight amateurs in the world. And he's shown, you know, with the 12 rounds that he went with uh, Orlando uh, Salido. Mm -hmm. And Salido, obviously not as technically clean, not as tall and rangy. Uh, as, as Walters, but he came in heavy, and he probably did it on purpose. Yeah. And he was rough, and he was dirty, and he was Salito in there. Yeah. And the young man, and I, I tell you what, I picked Salito to win that fight. I just thought it was uh, too much too soon for Lomachenko, and I thought that he was going <clears> to <throat> take him late and drown him, and that didn't happen. And, and I was sold on Lomachenko after that fight because he was the stronger, gutsier fighter down the stretch and in the championship rounds than the grizzled, hardened veteran from Mexico. Uh, and the, the, the way he dominated Gary Russell Jr. also obviously impressed. So he's somebody who can deal with speed and precision, which is what you get with Russell, and also someone who could deal with size and power and roughhouse tactics. You kind of get a combination of that, with, that. With, with Walters. Yeah. And there's just something about Lomachenko. He's a winner. But you know what? I think Walters is, too. I, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a dream fight if it happens, As guys. the driver of the Orlando Slito fan club, uh, I, I say <laughs> that victory has a bigger asterisk than, than Barry Bonds' home runs. Yes, post it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> very yeah. honest. Well, let's hope that fight happens. Well, that's another edition of 10 Count in the Books on behalf of Michael Montero and Doug Fisher, this is Steve Kim saying till the next round, goodbye everybody.